Is it bad to live next to a cemetery? No, it's not bad at all. It's only bad if you're scared or if you don't have any expertise with uh, dead things or, you know, passed away beings. I have to tell you this because um, I'm recording this in, a, in Darwin's Botanical Garden and like basically the center of this place. In this nice little atmosphere that I've created myself, consecrated this energy. It's very nice and peaceful here. It's very calm and quiet and the value that I'm exchanging for you here in these uh, videos, uh, simply through the energy and the act of me sharing these ideas with you, it's valuable in and of itself. So I'm gonna record some videos maybe today in the, my hostel. It's not gonna be as valuable. You're gonna watch before you're gonna watch it uh, for yourself. So it's only if you're scared that it's not wise to buy a property next to a cemetery. And uh, I'm saying this because uh, one of my friends that I recently met through this YouTube channel, you know, I recommend that you reach out to me on Facebook and for you to have a spiritual consultation with me. Okay, there's no charge involved with this. I'll be able to deeply investigate your life and really see the problems that you're having and help you out tremendously. No charge, okay? And afterwards, whatever value you feel like you received from me, you can simply uh, add, add me a donation. My PayPal link will be in the bottom of the description below. And thank you very much for choosing to donate to me regardless. Okay, thank you. You're uh, feeding my life. So this person that I recently met and he reached out to me for a, a spiritual consultation and I recently he sent me a message saying, hey, I live next to two cemeteries. Not one, not three, but two. Okay, two cemeteries lives next to him. And he also said that, um, let's see. He said that he's in his home and he feels like a cold breeze just passing through him, passing by him. And he's asking me, is this a ghost? Is this paranormal activities? I'm like, yes, it is, definitely, okay? Because I want you to understand that any kind of living being or passed away being, I should say, that's not in their physical form, in their body, not to say that these higher dimensional beings are like this, they're not, but a human being that is in, 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 encompassed in all of his attachments and still walking around in the human form just without a body, you know, what we call a ghost, or the Buddha called it a hungry ghost, uh, because uh, he's hungry for something, but he doesn't know what, and he's trying to fulfill himself, but he's attached to life, and he can't move on from the state, so it's kind of a very painful death, a very painful uh, existence. And so cemeteries are virtually filled with this, except not this one that I'm walking next to. You know, the cemetery that is right next to me in uh, the botanical garden, I have to walk by it every, literally every single day. And today, as I walked by it, I started to see the benefits of potentially living next to a next to a place like this because every time that I walk by or whenever I have a certain perception, and I did today, simply because this friend messaged me, messaged me I um, I started to activate my my channels of communicating with these spirits and beings, and my, my you know activating my throat center, my my power center, and I started feeding off of the cemetery in this particular way, in a certain way. And it was giving me energy, you know, spiritual, psychic energy. And I thought, wow, this is a very potent place to live in or live beside. If I lived next to the cemetery, I could do phenomenal things. Why? Because there's so much energy there, you know. It's not being used like, um, yeah, so death death can create a certain kind of uh, um, opportunity for you. And these types of consequences that you can actually channel and charge this energy and it's phenomenal for your, your spiritual growth. It can be, potentially. This wasn't always like this, you know, when I was a kid, my friend, my good friend, uh, Jonathan Mata Muhammad, his name was, okay? I was friends with him in uh, elementary school, sixth grade, in St. Peter's uh, Catholic Church, Catholic school in, in Etobicoke, Ontario, Canada. And Jonathan lived next to a funeral home. So a funeral home is a person when a person passes away and they are, their corpse is taken to a particular type of funeral home for them to be embalmed and taken care of and washed and cleaned and put in a casket and then for them to be taken to wherever they need to go so they look presentable. So their dead, dead corpse looks very nice and kind of pleasant to the, to the eyes and to the ears. Like, ooh, wow, this person is, still looks like he's alive, okay? That's just a human delusion. So he lived next to this place and I knew that there were dead bodies there, obviously, right? Because that's their business. And he lived literally next door. So his next door neighbor is this big house that's a funeral home. And my, it always freaked me out. And I was like, Jesus, so how do you deal with this? And he seemed to be fine, you know, he, he was living there for a while and so he was used to it. But now I see, well, I was scared, you know, I didn't have the cap capacities that I have now. But your ability to de deal with dead people and your, is directly a result of your Vishuddhi Chakra. So this is not activated, this is not open in most individuals, most human beings, it's not at all. And simply because it's not at all open in you, it's, you have no energy here, you have no ability to 
harness this energy or you have no ability to work with this dimension or to gain this energy, to work with this energy, then that means you're afraid of ghosts, inevitably. Okay. So now I'm not afraid of ghosts at all. I wish and hope the ghosts approach me. There are not many of them here in Darwin, Australia. Not at all, actually. There were more in Cairns because of the conditions there were kind of different. But here the fire just burns. It burns them. It burns them all, actually. That's just what I'm seeing or I'm guessing. So even in the, in the cemetery there, there are not really that many walking around. Or if they are walking around, they're doing their own thing. They're not bothering you, the human being. Whereas uh, in different places of the world, it's not like that. They're going to literally bother you. And they're bothering my friend, you know, the person that I'm uh, basically I'm going to send this video to you. Um, Lukasz. Yeah, is a Polish, Polish man. So uh, they're bothering you because in, inevitably, intuitively, they understand that you have some sort of spiritual ca capabilities and they're trying to get your help. So it's not like they're trying to help you. They're, they're not these types of beings, okay? There are spirit guides that are coming towards you and trying to help you and they're of a different quality of their different nature. They wouldn't uh, scare you in this way, at least most of them. But uh, these particular beings, the, the human beings that have passed away, they will bother you. Because why they're seeking help, they're seeking your energy. And what are they seeking? They're seeking destruction. They're seeking dissolution. Just like that, you can destroy one. What does that mean, destroy them? It means that uh, their physical body is dependent on attachments to this human form, to this human realm. And if you can send them enough energy or you can kind of dismantle them in a certain way, they will, they will either be dissolved, meaning that's finished, they're, they're finished uh, the human game, or they finished the universe game, for example. They've completed the game. Or uh, at least they'll, they'll, get, they'll get rid of the attachments and they'll travel to wherever the destination that they need to go to or some other things will happen. So you need to learn to channel this energy, this blue, blue chakra energy. The best way to do that is to connect to Mato Tepila in the United States. When I say connect, you don't have to go there physically, okay? You can just imagine that you are there now through looking at a picture. So with your imagination, you look at this picture, you look at the structure, maybe you can watch some YouTube videos, and you just imagine yourself putting yourself there. Like, what would it feel like to be sitting next to the stone? And this energy will, it's a very destructive energy. It's very kind of pleasant and powerful. What am I doing when I'm clapping? Well, energy is building up in me, and I'm simply releasing it. It's going outwards. And if there are any kind of lower dimensional beings here, they will get dissipated. They will get dismantled or destroyed simply through this. And this is, uh, of course, I learned this from Sadhguru, from his initiation. When, uh, again, re-watch re -watch my video titled, uh, Is Sadhguru a Fake Guru? I really explain in depth how, uh, when I saw Sadhguru and what it was like, what that whole experience was like. And as he was clapping, actually, I didn't mention this in that video. So when he was initiating us and he was clapping, he said, okay, everyone close your eyes on the second day of the, of the program. Everyone close your eyes and don't open your eyes no matter what. And he drank some water, we all closed our eyes and then he started saying, Shh. 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 Each time he did that, my Kundalini energy would spike, ba ba boom. And now I feel like, my God, I'm, it feels like my body's about to explode from the sheer power or the sheer electricity or the sheer whatever. And it was quite phenomenal. So that's where I learned this from. It's a, a technique to get your energies out, to release your energies. So, you know, I'm naturally releasing my energy through my speech, but that's of a, a kind of a low form of energy. It's just sounds, I'm making sounds. But to release your energy, energy, you know, your prana, that requires a different kind of a strength and it requires some actual action. So that's why the clapping of the hands. And you tried this too, Ukash. You know, next time you feel these ghosts, you have this possibility, you are in tune with this dimension or this energy. I know you, you are, I know you do. So uh, you have this throat chakra availability and it's just a matter of degree. So it's like, for most people, this it's like they have a plant in their home and it's just sprouted. It's just barely growing. Okay, that's fine. It's not a full-fledged plant or a full-fledged tree yet, but um, you have to nurture it and care for it and, and it needs energy. This plant needs energy. So energy in terms of water, in terms of sunlight, in terms of clean air, and in terms of you know, kindness and compassion and love. So just like this, you also need energy to blossom the center. And there are energy spaces which, help, which will help you to do this. And that's, you know, the most important one is uh, in Wyoming, Mata Tepila. It's the easiest one to connect in this way. It's just so destructive. It's just like... Just like that, okay? You can feel that. So go into the space. Go feel the space. Go feel this presence. It'll, it'll activate you. It'll activate your throat chakra. And uh, it'll make you blissed out. Similarly, Kailash Mountain 
is also a very, very powerful form for this throat center, except it's a little bit, it's, it's much harder to connect to. You have to be really willing to dissolve yourself, willing to completely annihilate yourself in order for you to go into the space of Kailash. It's a much more difficult energy center to work with. And of course, Janalinga is there, but it's of a different nature. It's, it's a very subtle or too subtle maybe for you to kind of really perceive this or make this strong, but still it's very, very powerful. Uh, I recommend everyone to connect to the Janalinga because it's like, it's like a formula for enlightenment. If you connect to the Janalinga space, you will get enlightened for sure. <clears throat> but for sure, Kailash, you know, Kailash is the most important thing simply because it's the most powerful. Dhyanalinga is there and it's very, it's made by human beings. It's made by us, as Sadhguru says, so to speak. So it's designed for a certain purpose and it's kind of very uh, user friendly. Whereas Kailash is not like that. Kailash is very destructive. Kailash is uh, extremely hard, extremely remarkable and very, very difficult to work with. So I'm still, I'm barely scratching the surface of this. I'm really activating this dimension within myself and I want to learn everything that there is to know about this Kailash mountain. And I am, okay? And I've learned the secret to how to do this, and it's through water, through the water that I'm drinking. You know, I can channel the energies of Kailash into the water that I'm consuming, and whatever is needed to be placed in this water, it has been already done, and still currently doing. And then the qualities of this water, I'll simply chug, and they will be combined into me. The qualities will become me. They will go into me. So again, this is conducive because it's a metal water bottle, and it's also inscribed with lots of consecrated... Uh, the consecrated mantra and the, the quality of the, the uh, quality of the metal and uh, the inscriptions and the various things. So I recommend that you, everyone, go to ishalife.com and um, uh, ishalife you know, website and purchase yourself a copper water bottle that um, that is inscribed with this uh, chant, Yoga 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 Shuraya. You don't have to get this one, it's $151, but you can get the other one that is copper. It's a copper water bottle, it's $40 in the United States. It's definitely worthwhile, it's definitely worth it. Why? Because you're already drinking water, you might as well drink the highest quality water possible, and it's a spiritual hack, it's a spiritual technique. So me telling you all these things, yeah, it's good entertainment, maybe it'll clearing some delusions in you, but you have to actually have a physical practice. This is responsible for like 90% of my growth in the last year. It's simply this water bottle, okay? So hello, you need this. And uh, again, I'm gonna chug this and you're gonna see the difference in the quality of me. So again. It's like filled with light. Just so you can see that. Okay, Shambo. So, again, going back to this original topic, is it bad to live next to a cemetery? Not at all. You can gain a lot of spiritual energy from uh, working with that place, from energetically tuning to yourself into that place. It's a remarkable energy to work with in terms of this dimension here. And uh, you should be grateful and lucky to live next to a kind of a big energy source. So it's not all the time that you can live next to, let's say, a football stadium. You can go and use that football stadium to run, play soccer, whatever, learn, train. It's kind of like this, okay? So don't shy away from this. Don't think it's bad. You have this opportunity. It's like a, a training ground. You need to uh, build the skills in order to deal with these beings. And you have the perfect challenges uh, right, wide open for you in order for you to do this. Okay, that's it. Shiva Shambo. Reach out to me on Facebook. I'll definitely uh, talk to you and I'll give you a spiritual consultation. That's it.